Welcome to the mornings with the mayor. This morning we have a very special guest you all know in uh, Ben Salem. We have our director of public safety, Fred Hiron, here. And uh, we want to try to bring you up to date. The show's a little bit different. Some things that we think you, the public, don't know what goes on and the costs that are involved in some of these things that drive me crazy. So uh, we want to have an opportunity to try to bring them up to you so you understand a little bit more about some of the costs that uh, I call them hidden costs that uh, make me very angry. And uh, Fred, I want to start out certainly, uh, number one, uh, good to have you here today. Uh, on a, on a show, normally we're arguing in the background, but today uh, we're doing a show. I'm only kidding about that. Well, no, I'm not kidding. But anyway, we're here together today. And some of the things I want Fred to, uh, we're going to talk about are things that I was shocked at some of the costs that we incur here at the township when it comes to police work that didn't used to be that way and how it's been passed on down. So, Fred, uh, Give you an opportunity to start out. I think the first one we want to talk about is the prisoners when they go into the hospital when they're arrested, and you might want to tell us all about that. Sure, I, I know. Uh, I know this was a, a certainly an issue we've had in the past couple months. We've had uh, on a couple occasions where we we, we arrest somebody, and uh, if all of a sudden they have some sort of medical problem, we've got to uh, depending on the crime that was committed, we've got to basically babysit them uh, in a hospital and. That expense comes on the township, and I remember, you know, we were talking about you, you know, you. Why don't we, you know, why doesn't the uh, sheriff's office and why doesn't the the uh, the corrections department come down? It doesn't work that way. Uh, while that person is under our care, under our uh, control, our custody, whatever you want to use, um, it's our responsibility, and uh, nobody else will come and watch them because then they have to pay the bill. And uh, sometimes we're at the bottom of the hill. And nobody else wants to get involved, so we have to uh, we have to eat that cost. Yeah, I, I, but I want you to bring it up because it shocked me. It absolutely shocked because you're doing this 24 hours a day, right? 24 hours a while, day. We're 24 hours a day while they're in the hospital, and it it, it uh, the past couple of weeks when we've had some uh, incidences, and the one time we had a prisoner in there for I think it was almost three weeks, and it was eighteen hundred dollars a day is what it cost the so town. Re please repeat that because. <laughs> It, it drives me crazy. Uh, for, I think it was about three weeks that we had a prisoner under guard, and uh, it cost the township about $1,800 a day. Per day. Per day. $1,800 per day. Now, we have a bad guy or a bad girl, whatever it is, that's locked up, that's in, in the hospital because they sustained injuries. We had to have somebody there, I guess outside the door or however they work, and I've seen movies where right. there's always a cop sitting outside the door. And 24 hours. Mm -hmm. I guess that's surveillance to make sure that... Uh, well, for, for a couple of reasons. One is sometimes the injury is not uh, an injury where they can't walk, so they could get up and leave the hospital 3 o'clock in the morning, and certainly no one would expect the nursing staff or a doctor to stop somebody. That's not their job. So it's our responsibility. And depending on the crime, we have a duty to protect the public. So God forbid we try to... We tr not God forbid, but let's say we were trying to save some money. And then, God forbid... I said, you know what, let's not put the midnight shift on. Let's just take our chances this prisoner is going to be sleeping. Uh, first of all, anybody that's been in the hospital knows you don't sleep. Anyway, they wake you up every hour to check your vitals and take blood and everything else. So at 2 o'clock in the morning, this prisoner decides to get up and walk out. If he can or she can, there's nobody in the hospital to stop him. And now they go back and commit a crime or they hurt the person they originally were hurting before the police uh, got involved. We're on the hook. So it's a lose-lose for us. We don't, we don't win in any of the situations. So we're forced to put a police officer around the clock um, on that prisoner until they're uh, what we call clear for incarceration. The jail won't take a prisoner that's under medical care. And we have to wait for the attending physician, to, what we call cleared for incarceration, meaning they're well enough to go to jail. It's kind of crazy, but the movies kind of do us a little of injustice because in the movies they have these hospital wards and all that. That doesn't exist in the counties. Uh, that doesn't exist. And uh, we're stuck watching them and paying the bill. Well, just to... Do a little math on that. If you have, uh, when they're in there, it's, the week is seven days. So uh, you have somebody in there for uh, three weeks. Sometimes I think it was even a little more than three weeks. That's $12,600 a week to have someone at the hospital uh, watching the uh, whoever the person is there. It blew my mind. And I said, we should let people know about some of these costs that we're incurring here at, you know, at the police department that uh, normally you wouldn't hear about. Now, the general public doesn't know what goes on, and, and some of the viewers might be 
watching the show and thinking, oh my God, that's ridiculous. Why can't uh, guards watch, prison, gu uh, prison guards, why can't sheriffs watch them? The way the judicial system is set up, until they're arraigned, until they're brought before a district justice, and in our case, Judge Brown or Judge Falcone, and those judges are great with us. I mean, they'll do it, you know, they would, if we could, we'd they'd go down to the hospital and arraign them, but that's just not, uh, those two judges are fantastic. They're just, uh, they just can't do it. The system's not set up like that. So until we could take them before Judge uh, Brown or Judge Falcone, um, we have to basically babysit these guys and gals. And uh, it's a cost to uh, the Ben Salem taxpayers. That's the problem. And if we don't do it, there could be a, a huge cost. Obviously, oh, there's, there's liability. Liability is off the chart. Connected. So uh, <laughs> to put it in plain numbers, somebody's in there for three weeks, a little over, close to $40,000. You figure can't happen. Well, it happens, and Ooh. it's happening, and we've had it happen. A couple of times in the last couple of months, yeah. we, we, we've had it, and, and, and it really, uh, we've, we've worked hard to try to avoid it. Yeah, the other problem we have is, uh, you know, anytime somebody's in our care or our custody, and then they start complaining of chest pains, that we have to, by law, take them to the hospital to get treated, and then we have to, you know, sit with them there. Depending on the crime, uh, we make decisions whether or not to watch them or not. Uh, I don't want to get into too much specifics. No, no, I, we but, don't um, need to talk about uh, that. Let, let me ask you this. How about uh, their stay in the hospital? Yeah. Uh, how about... Uh, no, well, thank God we're not responsible for that because until they're um, arraigned, until they're brought before a judge, they're, it's, it's their responsibility. Until they're brought before a judge, it's, it's their responsibility to make the payment. So the hospital would go after them as if they walked into the hospital on their oh, own okay. two feet. So Perfect. that, thank God, the township is not yeah, well, so <laughs> responsible. Well, wondering, you know, something else, uh, we'll just switch a little bit. Some of the things that, a uh, little bit more, uh, it's not amusing, but something, that, again, that I can't understand, car seats for, for children, infants and children. Uh, we have to have car seats. Uh, I'm not kidding. So explain that. I think you were a little uh, taken. Uh, I think you were a little startled a couple of weeks back when uh, the director of administration was signing a purchase order for car seats. I think you thought I, I was trying to pull a fast one on you, man. Yeah. I said, <laughs> "What are you talking about?" So go ahead. Now, my boy is turning 16, so I don't need a car seat. But did you have a baby that we didn't know about? You're trying to get the township to pay for your car. Yeah, I didn't know what in the world was going on. But anyway, car seat. <laughs> um. People that get arrested that commit crimes with their children, and they do. There's m plenty of people that are shoplifting and commit other crimes, drunk driving, and have uh, their children in their car. Obviously, we can't leave the kids there. We have to transport them back to the police station. And we're not uh, above the law. There's car seat regulations, and we have to put kids in proper restraints. So we have to have the, uh, the full car seat and then the child booster seats, and we have to have one for... Um, you know, every uh, every size child that we have to cover under the motor vehicle law. So we have to send somebody back to the police station, uh, get the car seat, run it out to the road, you know, put in the police car, and then drive the kid back to the station so we can get a responsible adult to come and pick the kid up. So that's a real, it's not, yeah, it's not a big dollar. I, yeah, I understand, <laughs> but it just struck me. I just like to bring everybody up to date. When I get, you know, I look at these things, I say, oh, my goodness, what's that? Well, that's what it is. We have to have car seats for, uh, thank goodness we don't have to have one in every car. No. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> they arrange that they come back and forth, whatever, however that's done. I want to get into the police work. Uh, Another thing that uh, we have here, and if anybody ever gets the uh, chance to go down by Public Works, uh, if you look straight as you go down the driveway where the new uh, uh, tax office is, if you go straight there, you'll see a, a yard with a lot of cars, trucks, maybe a boat in there, uh, all different things. It's the impound yard. And tell us about what we have to do there. Uh, I, I know that was another one that I think I think you were yelling a couple of weeks ago about that. Well, <laughs> Don't uh, worry about that one. I'm a sweet guy. I, <laughs> you're a sweet guy, but you know, you're a business <laughs> guy. Um, when we take uh, cars that are involved in crimes or arson or drug dealing, the cars have to be impounded. Uh, if, they're, if they're involved in a death where somebody uh, was killed, God forbid, um, we have to impound that car and we have to hold that as evidence and we have to have it in a secure Yard. We can't leave it at a uh, at one of the towers' yards because we have to be able to attest to the fact that we have surveillance cameras and everything on those yards. We have to be able to attest to the fact that the the vehicle has been secured from uh, time of incident to time of trial because the defense attorney will have an opportunity to bring in their their mechanics to 
what, did the brakes fail or didn't they fail? Uh, you know, or was it arson or was it not arson? So we have to secure all these vehicles, and sometimes some of these cases don't get to court. It, it could be in upwards of a year. I, I tell you the truth, I think maybe even longer than that. We have a tractor trailer over there that I think has been there longer than a year. And that takes up a lot of room. And I mean, and you can't believe, just right over, look in the yard, and you'll see all these vehicles. Well, go in the yard, you'll get arrested. Well, you can't get in the yard. <laughs> you can't. But uh, you'll see all these vehicles. I, I'm just trying to get in a little bit in depth of, of what goes on some of these things. That's on the outside. How about the evidence locker, uh, the evidence room here? Uh, well, we had just uh, reconfigured the evidence room uh, a couple months back because we were running out of room. We have uh, all this evidence, uh, homicide evidence has to be stored for life. There's... Um, Stop right there. Stop right there. It has to be stored for life. Somebody's in prison. Mm -hmm. As long as that person is alive, mm -hmm. right? Because they could come up and ask for another case, mm -hmm. right? Appeal their case somehow. That's correct. They have to keep the evidence. That's correct. For... Forever. Forever. The, uh, as long as the police department's been in existence, it's, I think it's 60 years now, there's, there's evidence from, from back when the police department first opens its, its doors. And um, we just had about uh, maybe four or five years ago, we had a 25-year-old homicide that the, uh, the criminal got a appeal for some DNA evidence saying that it wasn't him. And thank, we won. It, it actually was on Jimmy Armstrong, the officer that was killed in the line yeah. of duty, yeah. uh, some years back, and uh, we won the appeal, thank God. But this, uh, this, we had to have all that evidence. We had to keep it. If we didn't have that evidence, we just threw it out. That guy would be walking free today. And, and the fact of the matter is, you still have to keep it because it's still he still has appeals. Appeal sure. Yeah. Homicide, you have appeals forever. Yeah. And uh, we have to keep all homicide evidence. Um, we have freezers full of evidence. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah. Uh, I've seen all these things physically from the outside. I've never been in, in there. I mean, I you can see the freezer. You can see where the doors are. You can see it. There's a, a police officer in that room all the time. Am I right? During the daytime, she works in there. Yeah, night. Yeah, all I mean, if up. they need something or put right. something in there. So uh, imagine, imagine a community this large that all that evidence has to be kept. And uh, the reason I'm saying all this is a great cost that comes with all this and you, you need to know some of these things and we try to bring it out to you so you can uh, try to comprehend of what's going on here and, uh, and, 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 and something else. Yeah. If anybody out there really wants to talk about this and uh, we have an open door, you can talk to Fred, you can talk to me, uh, we'll give you as, as much uh, information we can uh, about what goes on there and, uh, and you have a right to know that. Uh, as I do, I go a little bit crazy when I can't believe how much we had to spend and and do and it's always proven to me that this is what you had to do and we we keep a pretty tight ship on that uh, well very tight ship I mean it, it I, I always say at a budget time it's amazing how we you know we, we're able to continue and you know with the tools necessary to do the job yeah. while uh, I don't want to you know get all political but to, that there's no tax increase and we're able to continue to do the well, job it's uh, amazing well uh, it is we're a uh, good team Good teams working together here. It makes it work. Uh, we we'll switch again a little bit on something. Uh, I, I think most of you know we have a SWAT team. Uh, they're special, I call them special forces. Uh, why don't you tell us about uh, some of the things that they're involved in? Sure. Uh, well, a actually, it's it, uh, back in uh, 1999, right after Columbine, and uh, I guess how timing after the school shooting uh, yesterday in Ohio. Oh, my goodness. The, the timing of that, huh? We... Um, we have, uh, the county had multiple SWAT teams throughout the county, and now we've down to three teams, a north, a central, and a southern team. So Ben Salem is partners with Bristol Township and Falls Township. So it's three uh, lower bucks uh, municipalities that work together. And when we have a barricaded subject or a subject that has taken hostages or a subject that's trying to commit suicide, that uh, we work together. So to really have a, a good SWAT team, we need almost 24 to 30 some odd members because you're not always going to get everybody. Um, but working with the other two municipalities, we only have to put so many people into it, and then they contribute officers too. So it saves us a lot, a lot of money. Uh, I, I'd actually have to figure out, but the dollar amount's got to be well into the tens of thousands That's of dollars. That's the first time today you heard that we're saving money. The rest <laughs> of it, it's not that we're 
Everything else costs us. Well, this yeah. costs us too. It costs us too because we have to have it. And, and you know what? One of the things I know we do a lot of training. Yeah. A tremendous amount of training on everything. But these men and women are, are trained specifically. Am I right? They yeah. do. They train. Uh, they train right now. Well, once a month. They train twelve hours a month. And uh, some specialties train a little bit more. Plus, they go to other training uh, throughout the year. And and they're using our training beautiful training facility that Bristol and Falls Township get to use because they're with us. Uh, on the one team, and, and the three municipalities train together, uh, which saves us a ton of money that we don't have to drive to Doylestown. We keep our officers in the lower end of Bucks County where they work. So uh, that has really been a huge savings, and, and just the configuration of that building well, alone. I don't know if to let's clear what we're oh. talking about. Talking about the EMS Training Center, fire and EMS Training Center, and police, right. up on uh, Street Road and Route 1. You see that big structure there, right where the... Uh, Turnpike comes out the new the new the entrance ramp, or yeah. exit yeah the slip ramp so that's the building that he's talking about right. where the where the three communities come together just for this but of course the EMS and the fire also train right there. yeah so uh, that that has really worked out well but uh, they put in uh, a lot of training and and we get about a you know 12, 12 calls a year which once a month you would think that's not a lot but it is a lot for you know s small municipalities in the scheme of things. Um, but the, the danger of not having these specialized officers is that somebody can get hurt. Certainly one of the officers, yeah. but also a public member, a, a uh, person. If you've ever been uh, in your neighborhood where we've had somebody uh, barricade in a house or threaten to commit suicide, you know, it takes a lot to get this person out. And our, and our mission is to get them out without injury to themselves and certainly not injury to the public or other officers. And that doesn't come by just knocking on the door and say, you know, pretty please come out. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times these folks are under the influence of either a controlled substance or alcohol, and they don't come out that quickly. And if you've been in a house that is, has been affected by this, but in your neighborhood, you know, unfortunately, when we're knocking on your door at 1 o'clock in the morning asking you, to, you know, that you're going to have to get out, it's for good reason. Uh, and sometimes it's two, three hours, but uh, I've been on incidences, uh, uh, you know, 14 hours. Uh, and it ruins everybody's day, the poor people in the neighborhood. But at the end of the day, it's about not getting anybody hurt. And that comes with a price, the training uh, that these officers have to train. How about uh, one of the, <coughs> excuse me, one of the things I was, and I'm still impressed with, is how you work together like if there's a school problem mm. and it has to be a lockdown and how all of it come together. I mean, all of the police department has special training for everybody. Well, uh, and we, Ben Salem uh, District is, is unbelievable. It's, uh, you know, Dr. Gertzul, now Dr. Baugh, and, and, the, and the other superintendents beforehand have always been very good cooperating with us, and we do uh, constantly doing drills and practices in our elementary schools up through our high school on lockdowns and intruders in the building, and intruders outside the building, and, uh, you know, I just I would, would hope we never experience a problem like this in Ben Salem, uh, but you have to be prepared because... Yeah. Uh, the police chief and the superintendent in Ohio yesterday wow. didn't wake up in the morning. Figure today is going to be the day I'm on. I'm on CNN. So, um, and you have to be prepared. And, and we work hard in Ben Salem uh, with all the disciplines: our fire departments, our EMS, the police, and the school district work all together. Matter of fact, this Thursday is our monthly meeting. We meet. Everybody comes together. We have council represented. Uh, Councilman Polari. Very active on that group, and uh, some community members, Donnie Anderson, Ed Canning from the community, as well as uh, people from all the different disciplines that, that work to solve problems. Val Ridge from the school district. So this, uh, you know, you say it all the time, but you, know, you set the tone, but everybody's doing it, that team. And, you know, if it was just the police department sitting at the table, and God forbid we had something, it would never get resolved because the police department wouldn't be able to do it. Mm -hmm. It's working with everybody and keeping council informed and the mayor's office and the school district and working with them. That's how, uh, if we ever, God forbid, had any type of crisis here, it would, it, we would be able to well, deal with it. We, we constantly work on prevention. Yes. So, I mean, constantly in all aspects, drugs. We try uh, preventing everything with fire. With it just... It's just the most important thing we do yeah. is, is be prepared, God forbid, like uh, the director said. Uh, I'm going to touch on one more thing, and uh, this is traffic tickets. And uh, you're laughing, but, you know, it costs us money. Well, why don't you explain how that works? Uh, yeah, people are always under the impression that cops are out there writing tickets to make money and generate revenue for the township. I can uh, tell you now, uh, to put your mind at ease, that is uh, so untrue. Uh, we're out there f to, for prevention so that if we have a high uh, 
an area where there's a lot of accidents or areas we get complaints on. Byberry Road is a good one where we get complaints all the time about speeding. Uh, different places in Eddington that people go through stop signs. So we'll put officers on those details, Casmer Avenue. Um, we'll put officers there to write citations. The average citation for a stop sign violation or a, or a simple traffic ticket is $25. Now I know what you're all thinking, wait a minute, I got a stop sign ticket and it was $111. That's correct, but the fine is only $25. The rest of that money, it's made up of different fines. Not one penny comes to the township. A matter of fact, the $25 is split between the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and the township. So on a tra traffic citation, an average traffic citation, the township gets, that's right, $12.50. That's what we're bringing in. And if you plead not guilty to it, I've got to send a cop to court for overtime. So we're taking a hit on the, on the traffic citation. We don't make money, but it's not about it, making that's money. That's right. It's a safety. But people sometimes think there's quotas and yeah. all this stuff. and. Uh, I can say I hope that that never happened in my watch. I know it hasn't. Uh, uh, they're doing a safety job, and it and it is important. Uh, you're in a town with so much traffic and so much, so many people. Uh. Look at Street Road. My goodness gracious! I mean, Knights Road and Street, uh. Uh, Mechanicsville and Street, uh, Hume. I mean, uh, it's just incredible how much uh, goes on there. Do you ever go through stop and go like? Everybody goes through the lights. I don't care what you tell me. Left hand turn, right hand. You better be very defensive and look what you're doing because yeah. people don't stop. So anyway, and, and if they do uh, get a citation, uh, like you said, that's what happens. I mean, $12.50, and then if they appeal it, uh, then they go to court. <laughs> now you're playing a police officer to overtime to go into court that day to, to do that. But that's not what it's about. I'm just trying to inform it's about the safety, and that's all we're talking about here. But just want you to know the cost, so you're up to date with us. You, you know, because I've been asking these questions all the time, and they're put in front of me all the time. And you know, uh, I know Fred it has to do his job, and uh, we depend on him. Uh, they're, they're, I never interfere in a police department. I stay out of their way. They know what they're doing. I certainly don't. But when we talk about the budget, and we talk about you know, how come this costs this much? How come that? That's what we did today. We tried to bring you up to date on a few things. That was just a um, couple of things. I said, <laughs> we just wanted to bring you up to date. Uh, I'll give you the last word. No way. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll let you start talking. <laughs> um, yeah, just to, just to you know, share with you some of the things that we go through here, and, and certainly this could be a 12-hour you know, program uh, if we start going through every line item of, of the uh, of the budget to explain everything and and as as you said mayor uh, i'm always open if anybody wants to uh, call or come in and talk to us uh, the books are wide open and i'd be more than happy to show you around and tell you tell you what we do every day and i think it's important for the public to know what their police department does uh, and that we've got so many different initiatives going on uh, that it wouldn't be enough time in, in, a, in a 20 minute 25 minute show but if you want to come in I'll certainly make the time and uh, we will uh, you know if you want us to come out to your neighborhood or to a group or to a civic group give us a shout here at the township building uh, or call public affairs Dawn Davis can hook it up and uh, and we'll do it it's, it's, all, it's all about it. I think I read somewhere we do something service 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 that's that's my motto in the days I was in business service 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 that's what uh, we're supposed to provide. And uh, we try our darnest. We really do. Uh, Fred, thanks for the great job you do. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thanks for uh, bringing us a little up to date on this. And this was very civil. We had an opportunity <laughs> to be in front of a camera here. They should uh, have the camera on us at 11 o'clock this morning. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> thanks again for being on the show. Thanks, Thank Mayor. You. And, and to all your men and women of the police department, we're very grateful for the job they do. Till next time, everybody. God bless. Who says you can't go home? Who says you can't?